right, come on up here and we'll just say. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Buford Alec Dunn, a native Mississippian that's happy to come back home riding the Ladybird Special. It's my great privilege to introduce to you a native of this county, a native of Mississippi, the great Congressman Bogg of Louisiana. Congressman Bogg. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, Senator Eastland, Senator Stennis, the distinguished mayors and officials of the great state of Mississippi, this has been a happy trip. Four days ago, on a bright, sunshiny morning, this valiant lady and her daughter Linda, and now her lovely daughter, daughter Lucy, left Alexandria, Virginia. And for four days, we have toured the Southland. And everywhere we have been, she has been received with graciousness, with friendliness, because she is of the South and part of the South. And she made this trip because she wanted to make it herself. <laughs> I am, I am particularly happy to be here at Edgewater in Harrison County, Mississippi, where I grew up. I see my mother and my sister here in the audience. Hello, God bless you. Let me say that I am proud of Mississippi. I am proud to be a Mississippian. Proud to have been reared in this great state. And let me say to you further, that we are not conceding any states, not a single one, including Mississippi. <laughs> I can tell you this, that all over this country, in Maine and Vermont and New Hampshire and even in Arizona, President Johnson is going to carry. And I just don't believe I just don't believe there's going to be a state in the union that he doesn't carry come November 3rd. Now, it's my... Now, it's my pleasure to present to you for a word the senior senator from this great state, Jim Eastland. My good friend. We are certainly glad to welcome Mrs. Johnson to a great state and a great people. And now the distinguished junior senator, John Stennis, your friend and my friend, John. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Folks, it's wonderful to be here with you, to be here when Lady Bird comes, and we want to welcome her, and we also want to welcome her daughter, Lucy. Good luck. Now, for just a... We're running late, unfortunately, and that's why we're hurrying. Some folks to take a bow here. Senator E.K. Collins, a Democratic National Committeeman from the great state of Mississippi, and Mrs. Collins. Uh, I got some others to introduce here. I'm a still a Democrat. God bless you. Ma <laughs> Mayor Geis of Biloxi, where are you, Mr. Mayor? And Mayor Meadows of uh, Gulfport. Just come aboard. We'll hear from you in just a minute. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the distinguished governor of the state of Mississippi, the Honorable Paul Johnson, who will welcome this lovely lady, this face lady of the land to Mississippi, Governor Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Mississippians, it is with a real sense of pleasure that in behalf of the official family of this state that we welcome this honored woman to Mississippi. I'm delighted that Mississippi once again has arisen to the occasion and are here to honor the First Lady of this land. We're delighted to have her, regardless here in America, of any political opinions or differences. The people of this country and the love and devotion of the people of Mississippi transcends all political questions. 
We are honored to have this fine lady in our state. I would like at this time to present my wife, who believes as I do, that in early days when Mississippians went to Texas, they are still there, and they too love more than anything else the Yellow Rovers of Texas. My wife. Thank you very much. I would love to present these. I would love to present these roses from uh, Mississippi, the hospitality state, to the first lady of our land. And I hope that she will take the most pleasant memories with her as she continues this journey and throughout the campaign. No campaign is an easy one. We know we've been there. And I hope that she will take pleasant memories with her of this one. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Eastland, Governor Senator Stannis, Governor Johnson, and your lovely wife, Mrs. Johnson. This is a, a, a Johnson uh, four old. Uh, Lucy, Paul, Lady Bird, and uh, what's your face? Dot. And Dot. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I present the distinguished chairman of the uh, state committee, the state chairman, a magnificent young man in charge of the campaign here, Mr. Douglas Wynn, who will introduce the first lady, Mr. Wynn. Ladies and gentlemen, the first lady of this land, Mrs. Lyndon Baines Johnson. wonderful to be here in Mississippi and to have with me on the platform Governor and Mrs. Johnson and Mr. Bidwell Adams and then two of my husband's longtime good friends, your own senators, Senator Stennis and Senator Eastland. I thank them all. Nearing the end of a long trip that has been a journey of the heart through a part of the country I love. I want to say how many memories have been stirred. I have had happy encounters with old friends and joyful reunions with kinfolks. I hear that the teacher who taught me at St. Mary's long ago, Mrs. Forrest, is down close at hand in the audience. I wonder if Mrs. Forrest would uh, rate Mrs. Forrest Miller would raise her hand. Right here. Was it, was, was it Ms. Davis when I used to know you? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to see you again. Now, now there's somebody, Miss Claudia. <laughs> I want to thank all the public-spirited citizens who joined in making this such a warm welcome to Mississippi. In all my travels through the South, I have been looking forward to reaching this beautiful resort area with its old world charm and its lovely gardens and its delicious seafood, the Mississippi Gulf Coast area. I want to tell you that everywhere I've been these four days, I have been impressed by the economic gains. And I know here in your own locality what a good neighbor and a strong economic help Keesla Field is with its, <laughs> with its population, civilian and military, of more than 17,000. The average Mississippian is receiving $270 additional spendable income, more per year now, than he did at the beginning of 1961. Of course, this is an average, and not everyone's income has gone up that much, but it is dollars and cents evidence of good economic management by this Democratic administration. whose objectives and programs, including the poverty program, have been to help assure that all Americans share more equitably in these gains in the future. Throughout my travels in the South, I have been thinking of some words spoken by President Franklin Roosevelt. 
He told us the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. Let us move forward with strong and active faith. I have found doubts in the South, but I have also found faith. I made this journey because I wanted to say to you that to this Democratic president and his wife, the South is a respected, valued, and beloved part of this country. The, the men of the South, the, the men of the South have been close advisors and trusted friends of my husband's during his 12 years in the House of Representatives and his 12 years in the Senate. Ten months ago, my friends, on a dreadful day that shook our country, my husband became your president. Since then, he has tried with all that is in him to keep our country on a steady course of economic prosperity, to face the world with firm strength, and to seek practical ways to help those Americans still in need. In his ex acceptance speech, the president said, this is a dangerous and difficult world we live in. I promise no easy answers, but I do promise this. I pledge the firmness to defend freedom, the strength to support that firmness, patient effort to move the world toward peace instead of war. It is our privilege to choose our leader. In doing so, we make a constant choice in shaping our personal destiny. Thomas Jefferson said, let the people know the facts and they will decide wisely. History has proven him right. I believe in our president and I believe in your right to choose and I believe in your wisdom to do so wisely. I thank you for welcoming me so warmly to Mississippi, all of you who worked to bring this wonderful meeting together. And now, and now, and now because I see so many young people in the crowd, I would like to ask our own young daughter, Lucy Baines, to step up and say hello to her. I'm proud to be here, and I'm proud mostly of the fact that there are so many young people in the crowd, because by so many young people being here, it seems to me that they are showing they are willing to accept the responsibility of being an active part of this campaign, that we want to learn and that we want to understand our government and how it works. My only hope is this, that we can take the unique educational advantages that we have had and the reasoning, the kind of reasoning that we've derived from these unique educational advantages and put them together to make our decisions, making our decisions only on reasoning and not emotionalism. For soon, probably sooner than we would like, we are going to have to take the reins of government into our own hands <coughs> and the kind of leaders we choose today will make the kind of country we will have to lead tomorrow. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for some presentations, may I present uh, the mayor of uh, Biloxi to make a presentation, Mayor Geis, to Mrs. Uh, Johnson. Where's Mayor Geis? Here he is. Come on here, Danny. Right quick. Thank you so much, Senator, uh, Representative Boggs, Mrs. Johnson, Governor and Mrs. Johnson, Senator Stennis and Senator Eastland, and all of our distinguished folks present. I'm certainly delighted to join with all of our very fine Mississippians in extending a very cordial welcome to this lovely lady. We are a state of hospitality, where hospitality is a way of life, and we're proud of it, and proud to have such lovely folks with us. And it's a pleasure right now to present to Mrs. Johnson a plaque 
which has on it remembrances of the many fine things of which she spoke just recently. Good to have you with us, Mr. And now the representative of Mayor Meadows right here, Commissioner Clark. Right quick, Commissioner. Go ahead. Ms. Johnson, on behalf of the city of Gulfport and the entire Gulf Coast, we want to tell you that we're proud of you. And that on behalf of the citizens of Gulfport, we want to appoint you an honorary citizen of the city of Gulfport. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I present my mother who lives here. Take a bow, please. <laughs> Thank you. Fine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, one or two other distinguished guests. Mrs. McKithen, the wife of our distinguished Louisiana governor who has just gotten aboard. Where are you, Ms. McKithen? Come in and take a bow and say a word. Right quick. Hello. I'm just very, very happy to be here and to take part in your welcome to Mrs. Johnson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I believe I introduced uh, Chairman Bidwell Adams. Where's Bidwell? Okay, but well, and now the distinguished junior senator from Louisiana has just gotten aboard, Senator Long. Russell, say a word to these fine Mississippians. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, standing in the back of this car, I couldn't help but feel proud to see the greatest first lady in the history of America perform in Mississippi. <laughs> and I'm especially proud I'm especially proud that she is a Southern First Lady of the United States. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was born and reared in Shreveport, Louisiana. That was the area where Lady Bird Johnson used to buy her clothes when she was a little girl. <clears throat> we found old people of East Texas to be wonderful neighbors and wonderful people. And I want to say to you young folks and you young people, remember what you've seen here today. You've seen a lady perform the way a first lady of the world ought to perform, and we're proud of her. Thank you very much. Everybody I'll get you a rest of the way out of here. Right that way. Go ahead. Now, everybody aboard that's going aboard, I see your photographers out here. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we have another minute here as we prepare to leave. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Come up here. I didn't introduce you. It's Mayor Francis Hasey, isn't it? And you too, ma'am. Come here. Come here. Hurry up. Hurry. Both of you. Hey, get off. Uh, this is Mayor Francis Hasey, an old friend of mine from Past Christian. And this is uh, Bob Reeves, my own mayor from Long Beach, Mississippi. Say something, Bob. We welcome the lady to the Gulf Coast. Good for you. <laughs> you got to get off now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, as we prepare to leave, let me introduce to you. Come here, Luther. The distinguished, distinguished Secretary of Commerce, Luther Hodges. Say something here, Luther. Thank you very much indeed, and thank somebody for putting up that sign back there. <laughs> We're very happy indeed to see such a wonderful crowd here. And I want to tell you, as Secretary of Commerce, that I think you're going to decide this election when you go into the booth on the basis of how, how well you're doing. Because every, every family in Mississippi and the country it's twelve hundred dollars better off than they were four years ago. And I'm very happy to see all of you here. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you are very wonderful to come out here, and let me say to you in all sincerity that all over this nation of ours, the president of the United States, the first Southern president since the war between the states, has been getting the warmest reception that any man ever got. <coughs> I got a, are we ready to go? Let's go. Yeah, we're gone. I got some Louisiana friends here I want you to meet. Here's Ellen Brian Moore, our registrar of state land office. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank Democrats for 1965. Here's uh, Congressman Jimmy Morrison.
All the way with LBJ. Goodbye and God bless you.